Time to say goodbye to hour-long steaming showers. Otherwise, you might be putting yourself at risk for cancer. Research has identified these areas of your house that might give you cancer, and we're here to explain just how and why. Make sure you stick around to make your house a safer haven for you and your loved ones. But before we jump in, please note that everything mentioned in this video is unbiased, fact-checked, and reviewed by qualified health professionals. The bathroom. We all know that the bathroom is one of the most damp parts of the house. With limited airflow, bathrooms, which often lack windows, can experience reduced ventilation, influenced by practices like extended showers and the use of air fresheners. Naturally damp environments have been linked to the development of certain respiratory disorders and conditions through the growth of mold and mildew. Fungi, such as mold, thrive in moist conditions. When a room lacks proper ventilation, it creates an environment where fungi can take root and flourish. But there's another factor that helps fungi and mold germinate. The combination of poor airflow, recirculated air, and higher temperatures contributes to the growth of these organisms. Is there a room in your house that immediately comes to your mind when you consider poor airflow and a warm atmosphere? Yep, the bathroom. Mold and mildew can be causes of serious respiratory conditions such as lung infections and lung fibrosis, caused by chronic exposure to pulmonary irritants. Although the research behind mold causing lung cancer is vastly slim, a distinctive link exists between prolonged exposure to specific types of molds and their potential to cause cancer due to the toxins they produce. One example is the aflatoxin chemical that can be found in aspergillus molds. As shared by research, chronic exposure to toxin-producing fungi and mold can lead to very serious health complications. Cellular and molecular biologist Dr. Matthew Pratt Hyatt had this to say about these unique toxins and their dangerous effects on the body. Does mold and mycotoxins exposure contribute to cancer? The short answer is yes. The four mycotoxins that have been found to be carcinogenic are aflatoxin, ochratoxin A, xerolinone, and citronine. All of these chemicals are products of different mold species, such as aspergillus and penicillin. The exposure to these chemicals can come through the ingestion of contaminated foods. However, more likely is from mold contamination in homes. No matter its route of entry, once it is inside the body, it is regarded as carcinogenic. Aflatoxin's mechanism to damage DNA is through binding to the DNA itself. The AFB1 form of aflatoxin forms an adduct to the DNA-based guanine. These adducts lead to breaks in the DNA, which then leads to mutations. Mutations to growth inducers or suppressors could lead to cancerous cells and lead to tumors. Aflatoxin has been linked to multiple types of cancers. One of the most common is liver cancer. The second type of cancer is gastrointestinal cancer. The third type of cancer caused by aflatoxin is lung cancer. Mold-infested bathroom walls and floors aren't the primary culprits behind cancer. Surprisingly, the objects commonly present in bathrooms can have carcinogenic consequences. Did you know that the items found in bathrooms can also have carcinogenic effects? Introducing the cancerous danger of air fresheners. While conducting research for our video, we encountered a substantial volume of studies linking the health risks posed by formaldehyde compounds present in air fresheners. From endocrine disruptions to neurotoxicity and the development of cancer, formaldehyde compounds are verified toxins. The American Cancer Society shares how the colorless, strong odor chemical can cause cancer of the nasopharynx and nasal sinuses, as well as increase the risk of leukemia. As air fresheners often harbor carcinogenic chemicals, it's a better choice to go for more health-conscious options, such as essential oils and peppermint. Easy Bathroom Solutions to Reduce Carcinogenic Risks while the bathroom can be a hotspot for carcinogenic toxins and chemicals, there are several proactive steps you can take to minimize these risks and ensure a safer environment. 1. Ventilation is key. One of the simplest yet most effective solutions is to leave the bathroom door open after use. This allows moisture to vent out, reducing the chances of mold and mildew formation. If your bathroom has a window, consider opening it during and after showers to let out steam and improve airflow. 2. Shorter showers. While long, hot showers can be relaxing, they also increase the humidity levels in the bathroom. By taking shorter showers, you can significantly reduce the amount of moisture and, consequently, the risk of mold growth. 3. Ditch the air fresheners. As mentioned, many air fresheners contain harmful chemicals. 
instead of masking odors with potentially carcinogenic substances, opt for natural alternatives like essential oils or simply improve ventilation. 4. Invest in a HEPA air purifier. High-efficiency particulate air HEPA, purifiers can effectively capture mold spores and other airborne pollutants, ensuring cleaner air in your bathroom. These devices can be particularly beneficial in bathrooms with limited ventilation, though this might not be your cheapest option. 5. Exhaust fans. If your bathroom doesn't have one, consider installing an exhaust fan. These fans help in removing moisture-laden air and odors, reducing the risk of mold growth. Ensure the fan vents outside and not just into the attic to prevent moisture buildup elsewhere in the house. 6. Mold remediation. If you notice mold growth, it's essential to address it promptly. While small patches can often be treated with home remedies, extensive mold growth, especially black mold, requires professional intervention. Black mold produces mycotoxins that can be harmful when inhaled. 7. Understanding mold growth. Mold isn't just a surface problem. The mycelium, or root system of mold, can penetrate deep into porous materials like wood and drywall. Simply cleaning the visible mold doesn't address the root of the problem. This is why professional mold remediation can be necessary for severe cases. 8. Regular inspections. Periodically check hidden areas like under the sink, behind the toilet, and around the tub or shower for any signs of mold or water damage. Early detection can prevent extensive damage, reduce the cost of house repairs, and reduce health risks. 9. Safe Cleaning Solutions Vinegar. This natural solution is mildly acidic and can kill up to 82% of mold species. To use, spray undiluted white distilled vinegar onto the moldy surface. Let it sit for an hour and then wipe away with water. Ensure the area is dried thoroughly. Hydrogen peroxide. A 3% hydrogen peroxide solution can be used to kill mold. Spray it onto the moldy surface, let it sit for at least 10 minutes, and then scrub the area to remove the mold and mold stains. Remember to store hydrogen peroxide in a dark bottle as it degrades in light. Essential oils. Some essential oils, like tea tree oil, have natural antifungal properties. A solution of tea tree oil and water can be an effective mold cleaner. However, it's important to note that while it's natural, tea tree oil can be toxic when ingested, so store it out of reach of children and pets. 10. Avoid harmful chemicals. While bleach and chloride can kill mold on non-porous surfaces, they can't penetrate porous materials to kill mold at its roots. Moreover, they release harmful fumes that can irritate the lungs and exacerbate respiratory issues. And please, absolutely do not mix these chemicals with anything in your household. While the bathroom can pose certain health risks, with the right strategies and awareness, you can significantly reduce these dangers and create a safer environment for you and your loved ones. Regular inspections, proper cleaning, and adequate ventilation are your friends when it comes to a safe bathroom. The Kitchen Do you love french fries, crispy cheese and bacon toasts, and morning omelets? So do we! And what's the harm in making the most of cooking oil by using it for multiple meals, right? Well, here's an important fact about reheated cooking oil you should consider the next time you plan on making an extravagant dinner. One way the kitchen area in your house might give you cancer is if you repeatedly reuse cooking oil. A critical review published in 2017 tried to explore the actual dangers and health risks of reheated cooking oil. As shared by the scientific paper, over time, reheated cooking oils can generate carcinogenic compounds called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, also known as PAHs for short. After scouring research domains for clear correlations, the 2017 study concluded that reheated cooking oils can have a detrimental impact on health. To quote, Remarkable studies demonstrated that the health adverse effects of RCO and its cooking fumes have been often attributed to their detrimental properties and ease to genotoxic, mutagenic, and carcinogenic activities. RCO and its cooking fumes were found to enhance the incident of aberrant cells, including breaks, fragments, exchanges, and multiple chromosomal damages and micronuclei in a dose-dependent manner. Furthermore, the large consumption of RCO has been associated with a number of malignancies, including lung, colorectal, breast, and prostate cancers. 
although it may seem like a cost-effective solution at first, it's best to avoid reheating used cooking oil for multiple meals. Instead, we can incorporate air fryers and ovens into our daily routines to reduce our consumption of potentially dangerous cooking oils. The basement and the attic. You might not be surprised to note the next two areas in your house that might give you cancer are the basement and the attic. Although not found in most homes, these two areas can be deemed very dangerous when not properly maintained and inspected for potential hazards. And here's why. According to the 2021 statistics shared by the Mesothelioma Center, only 7% of Americans have had their homes tested for asbestos, while 1 out of 4 Americans admitted they have no idea if their homes contain asbestos. So what exactly is asbestos, and why is it potentially cancerous? Asbestos is a naturally occurring silica mineral found in soil and rock that is mostly used in manufacturing and construction. With its strength, heat-resistant, and insulating properties, asbestos can be considered as a potentially harmful substance. You see, this natural mineral can be life-threatening when its microscopic fibers make their way into your lungs and bloodstream. Asbestos particles can remain in the body for numerous years without any clear symptoms or signs of infiltration. Over time, long-term exposure to asbestos fibers can increase the risk of lung cancer and mesothelioma, a rare cancer affecting the pleural lining of the lungs and the abdominal cavity. In terms of our homes, asbestos can be found in various building materials, such as paint, floor tiles, and insulation. More commonly, asbestos can accumulate in basements, attics, ceilings, crawl spaces, and floors. So what can we do to ensure that we are not being secretly exposed to asbestos in our homes? Homes built before 1975 are more prone to house asbestos in thermal insulation on basement boilers and pipes. Checking for tears, abrasions, or water damage is one way to inspect your home. Another solution is to call professional inspectors to come and explore the house for potential hazards. The last step is to remove all asbestos fibers and ensure that both your basement and attic stay toxin-free for you and your loved ones. But make sure you seek the help of a certified professional before tackling those fibers yourself. Were you aware of these four areas that can give you cancer? Pretty important information if you ask us. Will you be checking your home for potential carcinogenic hazards? Thanks everyone for watching. If you learned something new today, consider subscribing and comment down below what you want us to explore next.